Hi everyone, I'm Mike Burns, Principal Planner with the Houston Galveston Area Council, also known as HGAC. HGAC is a federally designated metropolitan planning organization for this eight county Houston Galveston metropolitan region. This agency coordinates short and long range transportation planning activities and decides how federal transportation dollars are spent within this region. Please be aware that HGAC has provided a Spanish translator and an American Sign Language interpreter for this event. With all that said, I'll now say thank you for participating in this first public meeting for the Southeast Harris County Subregional Study to improve mobility and safety in this area of the region. Subregional studies are an important tool and process for understanding the nuances of this huge region. Recommendations from this effort will help inform decision makers of this area's transportation needs and deficiencies and guide the distribution of transportation funding in a manner that aligns with your needs and the region's goals. A second public hearing will be scheduled, scheduled later this fall to present options and, con and collect comments on possible solutions to address identified issues during this data collection phase of the study. In lieu of a live in-person meeting, we decided to conduct this meeting virtually due to COVID-19 considerations. This meeting is being recorded and the video will remain on our project website for you or others who cannot participate in this this evening can view this presentation and provide feedback using our new Engage HGAC website through the end of the initial public comment period, which ends May 14th. We will show you how to do that at the end of this presentation. The format for this meeting will consist of two parts. First, we will introduce you to our project team and the scope of the study. This will include the steering committee members, an overview of the limits of the study area and the schedule. This will also include a description of the vision and goals for, of this effort and a summary of existing safety and mobility conditions, which has helped our team develop a priority network where we will focus our analysis and development of improvement options over the next six months. The second part of this meeting is for listening to you. Your comments are a critical source of input and will ensure that our team understands the issues traveling through and around the study area. You can also let us know where we're missing anything so far. So who is our project team? Again, I'm Mike Burns and I'll coordinate with our regional planning staff at HJC and our consulting team. HJC staff is responsible for the transportation planning, communications and traffic modeling tasks. I'll also be working with Michael Feeney of Kimley Horn and Associates. Michael is managing a team of engineers and data analysis experts to assist the data collection and development of options to address issues identified through this initial outreach effort. Next, it's important to share with you who from this study area is helping guiding development of this study. Our steering committee is composed of representatives from each of the five cities in the study area. Houston, South Houston, Pasadena, Deer Park, and LaPorte. And also includes TxDOT, Harris County, Port Houston, and the Gulf Coast Rail District. These individuals are assisting with development of the vision and goals, identifying critical concerns, and considering your input. They will also assist during this next phase of the study in developing and prioritizing the improvement options later this summer. Now for the project overview, I'd like to bring in Michael Feeney of Kinley Horn to describe the study area goals and data that we've collected to date. Michael. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Good evening. My name is Mike Feeney and I'm the project manager at Kinley Horn. Fortunate enough to work with you and HGAC on the Southeast Harris Subregional Plan. The study area shown on this slide highlighted in yellow. Um, is what we'll be studying, meaning we'll be examining this area in detail and has the following general boundaries. The Houston Ship Channel to the north, I-610 and I-45 to the west, State Highway 146 to the east, and roughly Genoa Red Bluff and Fairmont Parkway on the south. And we'll be focusing on key roadways and intersections within the study area, not necessarily on small local streets. In addition to roadways, we'll also be examining travel options for pedestrians, bicycles, and transit. So it is a multimodal study. On this slide, titled Tech Stop Planning and Environmental Linkages, or PL for short, um, 
TxDOT is conducting two major studies, a PEL on State Highway 225 is highlighted in orange on the north of the study area and in blue along I-45 to the west. Um, we'll, uh, their project teams and ours will be sharing information and ideas to develop improvements for the entire study area and there's an economy of scale by us sharing all that information. Um, this is an 18 month long study and the arrow on the schedule shows approximately where we are now in the process. I'd like to point out the study team is working with the steering committee presented earlier and also getting input from key stakeholders such as businesses, school districts, community groups and other local entities in addition to you, the general public. So don't be shy about your comments when you have a chance to give them. We want as much input from as many sources as possible as we begin to develop improvements. So again, don't be shy about offering ideas and observations because the goal of this study is better and safer mobility for all. Um, the study vision for the Southeast Harris County Subregional Study is to recommend improvements to address multimodal transportation, development, and economic policy needs in the subregion that align with, H that align with HGAC's goals of mobility, safety, economic competitiveness, transportation asset conditions, and natural and cultural resources. Um, uh, the performance measures shown in this graphic below are a way to, to quantitatively measure the progress toward the, the stated goals. And this is something HGAC uses for all projects. Um, and so in short, the improvements we recommend, be they physical or policy, will support one or more of HGAC's goals. Measurable goals. On this chart, we, we talk about measurable goals, how we're going to measure our progress towards improving things out in the study area. So in order to examine the effectiveness of the proposed improvements, we've developed a set of metrics for each goal to quantify and rank proposed improvements. The goals are the same as in the HGAC vision chart we discussed earlier, namely mobility, safety, economic development, maintenance, and natural and cultural resources. For example, we can measure potential mobility improvements by calculating changes to travel times and congestion. We can also look at improved connectivity and a reduction in gaps within the transportation network. For safety, we can predict changes to crash rates and the number of conflict points at intersections. Economic impacts of improved and new cross sections and access management changes will also be evaluated. The project team will examine maintenance issues by looking at such things as pavement types, truck routes, as well as maintenance funding levels and policies. Improvements to natural and cultural resources will be quantified by calculating changes to vehicle emissions and delays. We'll also look at improving access to these resources and check for any property impacts to them. Existing conditions on the roadway network. This map shows the overall roadway network that the subregional plan is examining. Note that we're focusing on freeways, arterial roadways, and major and minor uh, connect, uh, collectors, and not on small local streets. But the set of roadways shown here forms the backbone on which you travel, whether you're a resident, a visitor, or a business in the study area. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, while not a, we're going to focus on active transportation, and while not a formal detailed bicycle study, we are examining bicycle and sidewalk connections within the study area. Solid lines show existing bicycle facilities and sidewalks. The dashed line shows proposed bicycle facilities, and these can include bike and pedestrian paths or separated on-street bicycle lanes. And so the study is focusing on overall mobility and not just on vehicles alone. And as we progress in the study, we'll make sure our recommendations don't negatively impact any planned bicycle or pedestrian improvements, and we'll look for opportunities to fill in missing gaps and make new connections for those modes. Transit facilities. As you can as shown on this slide, your community is served by both Houston Metro and Harris County Transit bus routes, as well as the Houston Metro Park and Ride lot. We're coordinating with both transit agencies to see what improvements can be implemented in the study area to provide alternatives to driving your car only. The freight network. This, shot, this slide shows existing railroads as well as the National Highway Freight Network. As most of you experience daily in the study area, there's a significant amount of freight moving through this area due to the Port of Houston 
industry along the Houston Ship Channel, and just general industry within the study area. Our goal is to develop improvements, both physical and policy, that provide for a safe, effective, and reliable movement of freight. These improvements may take the form of suggested truck routes, improved pavement structures, for example, thicker pavement on key truck routes, and improve railroad crossings and perhaps truck parking. Evacuation routes. As we've all experienced in past storms in this region, have, having a connected set of evacuation routes to move people away from potential danger is important to a region like Houston. We'll examine the existing evacuation routes to determine their capacity, passability during storms, and connectivity. The capacity, presence of bottlenecks, and roadway elevations are issues we'll be examining to improve your safety. environmental features on this map. It shows the existing key environmental features such as parks and streams, as well as sites to be aware of, such as Superfund sites and landfills. As we're developing improvements, we will look to provide better and safer access to parks and cultural and historic sites. We'll also vet our improvements to minimize any impacts to these parks and avoid sites such as landfills. The project team will also coordinate with Harris County Flood Control to minimize roadway uh, runoff from streams and determine if there's options to improve drainage within the study area. The screening process. In terms of vehicle, vehicular mobility, we'll be examining both corridors, which are stretches of roadway, and key intersections. And now Peyton Aaron's a project engineer with Kimley Horn, who's been leading several tasks on this study. He'll now discuss some details as to exactly what locations we're going we're studying and why we chose them. Peyton? Thanks, Mike. The purpose of network screening is to organize information about the subregion such that informed decisions can be made regarding areas to be studied. Network screening defines focus areas, such as intersections and corridors, for further analysis based on a limited evaluation of key indicators. Network screening was used to identify the following priority network, 25 high congestion corridors, 100 high congestion intersections, 25 miles of high crash segments, and 50 high crash intersections. The screening process is a necessary first step to refining the study area. The following slides will present the preliminary results, but we ask that you provide feedback on specific corridors or intersections you'd like us to study. 25 high congestion corridors were identified for further study. Priority corridors are given here with a, are shown here with a gray highlight. These corridors were selected primarily based on functional classification as indicated by TxDOT's most recent roadway inventory. Functional classification is symbolized on this map to distinguish roadways as either interstate, freeway, principal arterial, minor arterial, and major collector. Only priority only priority corridors are shown on this slide. Principal and minor arterials were selected for further study as these are off-system, non-TxDOT roadways and high-volume roadways. Freeways and collectors, they were shown in gray and green on the previous slide, will not be analyzed in detail unless we hear from you all specific locations to be studied. For example, three of the 25 priority corridors include Spencer Highway, Fairmont Parkway, and Red Bluff Road. One hundred high congestion intersections were identified for further study. Priority intersections are shown here with a gray highlight. Circles without a gray highlight are signalized intersections which were considered but screened out after this initial evaluation. Priority intersections were selected primarily based on the intersections total entering volume and volume to capacity ratio. Total entering volume is symbolized on this map by circle size. Larger circles indicate larger volume. Volume to, capa volume to capacity, expressed as vehicles per hour per lane, is symbolized by color for varying thresholds. Red indicates intersections which are near capacity. Only priority intersections are shown on this slide. Priority intersections include intersections with large total entering volume and high volume to capacity ratio. Low volume and under capacity intersections 
were shown as small green circles on the previous slide will not be analyzed in detail unless we hear from you all specific locations to be studied. For example, priority intersections to be studied include Spencer Highway at Strawberry Road, Spencer Highway at Center Street, and Fairmont Parkway at Red Bluff Road. Twenty-five miles of high crash segments were identified for further study. Priority segments are shown here in red. A heat map of crash density is symbolized here such that cold colors indicate higher crash density. Priority segments were selected primarily based on the number and rate of fatal crashes, severe injury crashes, total crashes, and non-vehicular crashes. Considerable weight was also given to Harris County's high injury network per the recent Vision Zero Action Plan. For efficiency during analysis, the priority segments are long continuous segments. For example, priority safety segments include Spencer Highway from State Highway 3 to Center Street, which is a 6.8 mile segment with 45 fatal or severe injury crashes, and along Fairmont Parkway from State Highway 3 to Red Bluff Road, which is a six mile segment with 34 fatal or severe injury crashes. Fifty high crash intersections were also identified for further study. Priority intersections are shown here with a gray highlight. Circles without a gray highlight are signalized intersections which were considered but screened out after this initial evaluation. Priority intersections were selected primarily based on the intersection's number and rate of fatal crashes, severe injury crashes, total crashes, and non-vehicular crashes. Crash rate expressed as crashes per million entering vehicles is symbolized on this map by circle size. Larger circles indicate larger crash rates. Fatal and severe injury crashes is symbolized by color for varying thresholds. Brown indicates intersections with four or more fatal or severe injury crashes. Only priority intersections are shown on this slide. Priority intersections include intersections with high crash severity, frequency, and rate. Low crash severity, frequency, and rate intersections were shown as small yellow circles on the previous slide and will not be analyzed in detail unless we hear from you all specific locations to be studied. In the event that the currently in the event that currently unidentified safety concerns are discovered early in the study, those locations will be included in the priority network and analyzed in detail. As examples, high crash priority intersections to be studied include Spencer Highway at Red Bluff Road, Preston Road, and East Boulevard. In summary, the priority network was identified as a result of network screening, which evaluates key indicators. These priorities are shown on this slide and categorized as either corridor mobility, intersection mobility, segment safety, and intersection safety. As symbolized by multicolored locations, some intersections and corridors will be studied from a mobility and safety standpoint. Thanks, Michael and Peyton. And now we would like to show you a short video on how to use our website and online engagement tools so you can provide input into this study. Welcome to engage.h-gac.com. You can participate by clicking the register here button to start engaging current HGAC projects and begin using the comment maps and project surveys. The goal for today will be to add a pin to the comment map and to take our project survey to help our project teams understand your concerns about moving through and around the study area. As an example, we will use the Southeast Harris sub-regional study, but the same process can be used for the other projects on the homepage. On the right, you'll find the registration button to get involved, as well as other helpful short texts. You'll also find a description of the project schedule. Towards the bottom of the page, you'll find important links such as the public meeting information. We have provided quick step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the comment map. But today, let's click on the comment map button to explore the map together. This intro panel provides information on the different pin types to pair with your comment or concerns. You can zoom into the map or use the search bar to type in the location, address, or point of interest. Let's add a pin. Select the pin that best describes your concern. 
Click and drag your pin of choice to the location of concern on the map. Once the pin is dropped, use the add your comment box to describe your comment or concern. This is required for each pin you drop. Click the add image if possible. If you have not registered, you'll need to add your email and screen name. Check the box to agree to terms and conditions and remember to submit. You can add as many pins as you would like. Don't forget to please take the survey on our project webpage. Again, you'll need to register to participate. The survey is short, quick, and will help our project team prioritize and capture what is important to the residents, workers, or visitors of this area. Thank you for helping plan the future of this area of the region, and we look forward to receiving your feedback. Again, our public commenting period for this portion of the study will extend to May 14th. So please use engage.h-gac.com to comment on this and other ongoing studies like the Montgomery County Precinct 2 Mobility Study and the Liberty County Mobility Study, which will have public presentations like this later on in April. And this is the end of the presentation. We will now open it up to hear from you uh, to comment or ask a question, please use the chat feature in Zoom or use the commenting box below this video if you're watching this recorded meeting. For the Zoom call, you can also raise your hand on your computer by clicking the button on your computer or device or dial star nine if you're calling in so we can unmute you and hear your comments and questions. Thanks again for participating. All right, well, thank you all for, for watching that presentation. We're now in the question and answer session of the meeting. And uh, so far, we don't have any questions in the chat. Uh, Allie, do you want to uh, recognize the one question that we did get from someone about resiliency? Sure, I'll just read this question aloud. Um, they asked, do you have data from Harvey and other storms that show which road sections are regularly flooded? And um, just so everyone is aware, my response to that question is um, that we recently completed a resilient study for the entire eight county MPO region that took into account roadway elevation and flood levels from Harvey and other storms. Um, those results from that analysis um, are going to be considered when we look at recommendations and uh, prioritizations of roadways in this study and other studies that we're conducting. Um, and this, I have a link, if you can see the Q&A um, chat, I have a link to our resilience tool um, and you can see that data for yourself. Thank you for that. Uh, Greg, it looks like we do have a hand up from, um, did that just go away? There's no longer a hand raised. I think raised. it did go down. Could get there fast enough. Oh, it's back up. Gonzalez, Greg, you want to recognize Pat Gonzalez and good evening. Good evening. Um, my question is that we've been trying for many years now to get transit into the Pasadena area. What you're proposing is only certain areas of Pasadena would possibly get some sort of transit relie relief. But my question is, will we be able to see more transportation in the city of Pasadena for the citizens that are needing it and the students that are needing it going towards San Jack um, College, like we had it before and then the mayor didn't pay for it and of course we lost it. I don't like to see that again. So that's why I'm asking these questions as far as are we gonna be able in the future, if not right now with this project, Will we be able to see transit in Pasadena? Thank you. Uh, Mike Feeney, do you want to fill that field that? And that, that is part of our scope, just to give you the short answer. That is part of the scope of work is to look at this. Uh, you did mention a destination that seemed to be important for everyone in the study area. Michael, do you want to expand on, on an answer? Yeah, we're going to be reviewing the existing transit operations in there and also look at what has happened in the past out there. And we're looking for comments from the citizens, citizens like you just made. So we can, if we hear a strong drive for transit, we'll start looking at ways it could be implemented, and present that as a potential solution, along with the potential cost for it. And it may be through Metro, it may be through Harris County's transit service. But if we keep hearing a strong 
uh, desire for transit, we're definitely going to, you know, it, it kind of goes up the rankings towards something we want to look at implementing. And so okay. there's the, the tool that Mike, that Mike described in a little video, the bang the table, is an opportunity for you and your neighbors to go out and put comments in there, um, such like, I would like to see more transit service for major destinations like San Jack College. Okay, my name is Pat with Caring for Pasadena Communities. Okay. Thank you so much for that, that question and uh, that topic actually, because uh, you know if we are going to you know tackle the congestion problem, it's it's not just a one mode solution. Uh, you know we pretty much have to increase utilization of all modes like walking, biking, and doing transit. So thank you, thank you for bringing that up. We have thank two you. other questions in the Q and A here. Uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, what measures do we anticipate uh, taking uh, after the study? Um, and I believe this might be related. This is a uh, Pat Van Hout. Uh, uh, Pat, if you want to raise your hand and clarify that, uh, that, that might be the best opportunity uh, to uh, allow us to give you the best answer. And I, I will say that there will be a, a, an implementation strategy for recommendations uh, or recommended improvements in, in this area. Uh, we will go through a prioritization and an implementation strategy uh, for those that do seem to uh, like very popular ideas, um, we will share that with you as part of a second meeting later on in the fall. Uh, so hopefully some of these uh, uh, ideas that we propose, uh, there might be some that are just very popular ideas and uh, you would like to see them implemented. And we will have an implementation strategy associated with those uh, cost, uh, a, a prioritization, how they relate to other recommendations in the area. Um, and then after that, it's, it's kind of dependent on what the actual recommendation does, depending on how it's going to be implemented. But those are the measures that we'll take after the study is just provide each of the communities that are participating as well as the region, uh, which that's what HJC's role is, uh, to take those recommendations and to uh, try to find them a home in some implementation uh, process, whether that be a local uh, capital improvement plan whether it's the Regional Transportation Improvement Program for uh, other projects that are eligible for state funding. Um, but that's, uh, those are the measures we'll take. So hopefully that, uh, raise your hand please if that's, uh, uh, didn't address fully your, your answer. Uh, we, actually, we actually have her unmuted. If you, you would like to further elaborate, Pat. Well, I'm interested in the bus service also uh, the city had bus service previously from Harris County Transit, and it was stopped. And about three years ago, a little over three years, there was talk about getting bus service back, and then nothing happened. And then a presentation from some company, I don't remember the name, but they wanted to do an on-demand bus service, more routes running both directions. There was quite a bit of, of service involved, but the price wasn't very good. And uh, they were looking at something that would have been a million dollars or more per year. And, uh, that did not seem like a, a very good deal, especially compared with what we had had previously. The city voted uh, against doing Metro. Uh, the, the citizens of the city vote against Metro previously. And right now all of the sales tax is in use for other things. So I don't know to what extent you would look at providing bus service or if you would just say to the city, oh, bus service would be good and it's up to the city to come up with the money for it. Are you actually doing intersection improvements? What what would you be doing after you study? Well, the purpose of the study is to identify uh, supported recommendations that, that should be implemented. Uh, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's great that we're hearing this desire for more public transportation in the area. That's great. Uh, that actually helps the cause, actually. Uh, if it gets more detailed of, again, like what Mike Feeney elaborated on, if you, if you have areas where you specifically want the public transportation, that helps as well. Uh, put that information on the, the comment map that 
be provided on the engage.h-gac.com website. Um, again, there's, there's a lot of agencies that are involved here. Uh, there, it's, uh, it, it is a political environment. Um, and, uh, you know, the uh, resources are limited, uh, funding resources are limited. So that really dictates exactly what gets implemented. But this process identifies a problem and a potential solution that's generally supported uh, by the community. And that's, uh, again, it goes into after the study and implementation phase. And that gets very dynamic uh, afterwards. You know, things like public transportation, uh, you're right. Uh, whether it's Harris County Transit or Metro, uh, those funds for that service need to be found. Uh, and uh, if later on, as we get through this study, we can identify ways of, of uh, maybe doing that successfully, uh, maybe piloting a project uh, to demonstrate that there's desire in the community to do that. Uh, those are just different avenues that we can take to try to help realize or implement uh, that service to, to help you and others out that, that really need that, that service. Uh, is there anyone else that wants to elaborate on, on that? Um, yeah, but Mr. Howe, what, what we would do is look at a range of transit services from something more minimal to something to providing a little more capacity, a little more frequency. We'd come up with a, a rough a cost estimate of how much it would cost to operate that and look for funding, potential funding sources for it from local, state, federal, um, and see what we could, we could do. But as, as, Mr., as Mike Burns said, in the end, we will make recommendations. Here's some choices you could do, and it's up to the policymakers to what they actually implement. But the more we hear from the community, for example, in this issue, if we hear a ton of people talking about transit, we'll document that, and that will be input for the policymakers. Does that help out, Mr. Helm? Yes. Uh, well, thank you for the uh, thank, thank you for the uh, the comment and the question. Um, we have another hand up, uh, Raul uh, Camaro. You are unmuted. If you would wish to speak. Okay, uh, uh, Camarillo. Yes, um, I put a typed in my question because you mentioned about intersection safety and the <laughs> fatal incident or accidents that occurred in several of the uh, intersections in Pasadena. Does that data only represent the um, vehicle accidents or does it also separate or include the pedestrians that have, um, um, have been involved in these uh, fatalities? Because I've already seen two people <laughs> get run over uh, on our streets. One on Preston actually happened a couple weeks ago. So, um, that's why I wanted to see, is that data represent both or is it separate? Yes, the, the crash data represents both vehicles and pedestrians. Uh, and special consideration is given to non-vehicular crashes. And the reason for that is only about 2% of crashes involve a pedestrian, but about 25% of fatalities involve a pedestrian. And we're focusing on uh, implementing improvements that will improve you know, safety uh, and mitigate severe and fatal crashes. So that's, that's a focus for us. Okay, so uh, it, all those uh, intersection points that you had on that map, would, uh, we, would we be able to see what those uh, that data, data behind those points? Yes, uh, so when we when we do a, a more thorough study. So right now we're asking for if there's other locations you'd like us to analyze in detail. And when we study those locations, the final report will have a summary of the crashes that have occurred there. Uh, HGAC also has an interactive crash viewer map. Um, and so there's about five years of data there and you can look at what, what fatalities have occurred in the region or, or other crashes that may interest you. Okay, well, well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Raul, question. too, you can use the bang the table tool to go drag uh, a pin and put it on a map if you have some areas of specific concern and put your concern, your comment in there too. So it's a, it's a neat tool to go in and get your input recorded. Okay, thank you. And we have uh, another question in the Q&A. Uh, panel, uh, do you examine 
311 data to identify intersections where the public has submitted the most requests for investigation or improvement. Um, is there anyone that wants to field that question at all? So I, I, I think you're referring to the Houston 311 app to report um, infrastructure concerns. Um, and that information is collected by the city of Houston in a portion of the city of Houston is in our study area. So um, that's certainly something that we can take a look at um, to see if there's any maintenance issues or, or, or short term things like that, that, that folks have identified um, in that 311 application. Allie, we'll definitely request that from the city and see if it's geocoded in there as well. And I saw a couple, at least one person from the City of Houston Traffic Department listening to our meeting, so he can expect a call from me tomorrow. That's the year we'll receive, huh? Um, I don't see any more hands up right now. It looks like the, the questions in the box are um, satisfied. Just scrolling through the list of attendees here. Well, it looks like the theme of the questions, would you say, are public transit related and, and safety related, trying to reduce cr uh, crashes. So that's, that's great, dealing with mobility and safety. That's exactly what we're trying to improve in the study area. Um, let's see here. Not seeing uh, any other. Uh, Mike, there's one more question that came up. Do you have something compact that could be printed at, as a flyer telling people how to comment? We do actually. We do have a, a, a study area flyer for, for this particular event. Um, I, I, this is from uh, this event, Howard again. Um, I, we can absolutely provide that to you if you'd like to help us distribute this information. Um, we don't have a specific pamphlet on how to make a comment, but we do have that instructional video on that um, website that we mentioned. And like Mike said, we have a flyer and it also has the website link there in several ways to participate. It doesn't have to be through that website. You can. You can email us. Um, all of our emails are on that website. You can send us a written comment. You can call us. Um, there's a multitude of ways to, to get in touch. So, and they're all listed on that engage.h-bac website. Website's really uh, going to be the, the best tool to, to find information about this. And we do actually have the uh, that video, the instructional video of how to actually drop a pen. We do have that on the website itself, right next to the uh, the, the tab for the whether you want to take the survey, which is very important to do. I'll just ask you to uh, not just drop pens, but actually take the survey. Uh, that, that's very good information for us to to know. Uh, but the video will be there as well for for that kind of. Let's see, we need public transportation in Pasadena. That's good. And thank you for the crash data, uh, data link. And uh, yeah, just on the crash data, uh, Mike didn't mention, uh, there is, if you go to the engagegac.com uh, website, we do have a data dashboard on the project site and you can uh, click on that link to the data dashboard and, and find more information about uh, crashes, whether it be specifically bike and pedestrian, you can look at that and total crashes in, in, in that area, if that's uh, something you'd like to investigate yourself. Um, Let's see, Pat, you are asking for a click and print and pass it out to people. So it sounds like we can send you that flyer. Um, if you could um, directly message us your email, or uh, send, send Mike an email on that Engage website, we can get that flyer to you. And Mike, we might also just go ahead and add it to the public meeting section of the website for others to print out. Okay, gotcha, email. We'll get that flyer to you. Thank you, Pat. 
And thanks for helping spread the word about this and encouraging more participation. That's fantastic. I, quite honestly, that's really how you, the, you know, that's success for a lot of these type of efforts is that it's not just us, uh, you know, trying to provide as much information to you. It's, it's you helping spread the word as well. Um, you know, we have a steering committee that's a representative of the city of Houston and Pasadena and all the rest, and we're, we're relying on them and you all to uh, help increase participation and get as many people involved in this process uh, as, as we can. That's just going to make a better product at the end of the day. We're going to have recommendations that the entire community supports. So that's fantastic that you're going to do that. I don't see any other information right now or any other comments or questions right now. Mike, I did want to mention that uh, on the website, there is a button you can select to change the, change it from English to Spanish for any other language that you might need. And it's the same way with the survey and the comment map. Yeah, we just try to make the, the website as friendly as possible, which that includes uh, multilingual abilities as well to translate the material for, for you all. So um, hopefully take advantage of that. And uh, that doesn't eliminate your ability to participate. We actually try to make it as accessible as possible for everyone to participate and get involved. And we'll sit tight for another minute or so to see if uh, some other questions are being formulated. Um, like I said, this is the first of two uh, public outreach meetings that we plan on having. Uh, the other one uh, will be just like, well, maybe it's in person, who knows, right? But uh, uh, we're doing this one virtually for obvious reasons. And then uh, hopefully later this fall, um, in this calendar year, we'll reach out again and share with you some of these ideas. And then again, if for those who uh, can help spread the word of uh, ideas or programs, projects that seem attractive, that can really help out the community, again, maybe you'll help spread the word and get uh, the community more involved in, in supporting some of those initiatives, so the ones that you're, you're in favor of. Mike, would you like me to share your contact information on the last slide? That would be fantastic, yeah. Earl, thank you for participating as well. And there we are. If there's no other questions or comments. Again, this is very introductory. This is the, uh, the icebreaker to let you know about what's going on with the study and the program. Uh, it's mostly we're here to listen to you to make sure that we're on the right course and, and looking at areas, the street networks and other facilities like public transportation that the community really wants. Uh, if you think of something along the way that you just didn't think of right here tonight, please again, go to the engage.h-gac.com website uh, to find out all the information and to leave your comments uh, and to watch this video if you want to rewatch this. Uh, you can also email me, uh, mike.burns at h-gac.com or uh, Allie Isbell. Uh, uh, her email is provided there on the screen for you as well. She can also help uh, uh, address um, any of your comments and questions that you, that you have along the way. And I still don't see any other Thank you, Ashley, uh, Ashley Seals. And with that, I think we've come to an end of this program. If there's any last words anyone wants to say, uh, speak now for every whole few years. Uh, other than that, if there's not, I'll say uh, thanks again for participating. And uh, we hope to, you will continue to participate during the comment period and we hope to see you all again later on uh, this year to see what kind of ideas we came up with to address some of these solutions like public transportation and safety. So thank you all and enjoy the rest of your evening.